tonight. From SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California. It's week 16 of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Matthew Stafford and the Los Angeles Rams. Taking on Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Tonight, we've got the crew set for what should be a real treat, a great Monday night matchup between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Los Angeles Rams. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. And no run back on the opening kickoff. It'll come out 2-25. to 25. So out come the Rams now for their first possession. Leading the charge at quarterback, the former Georgia Bulldog, Matthew Stafford. There's a lot of good to watch in the game last week, wasn't there? I mean, he did throw two touchdown passes. That was impressive. And he's so close, isn't he? The three interceptions killed him and his team. That was costly. But if he just cleans that up a little bit, there's a reason for optimism with this team and this passer. And he is going to lose yardage here. Call it officially a loss of two on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. Part of their struggles last week was getting these negative plays on first and second down. That's something they have to be wary of as this game continues. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Throwing at Stafford. Hit as he throws there, incomplete. Well, this defense for the Bucs, they were very strong last week in the win over Carolina. And the big difference in the ball game, their ability to force turnovers, three of them, in fact. Being able to take the ball away, give it back to their offense, that's something that's emphasized each and every week, and they carried it out. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. It'll be a loss of two, maybe three on the play. And it'll be fourth down. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to punt it away. He punted four times in the loss last week as he gets this one away here. Little razzle-dazzle by OBJ. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. Tampa Bay coming out along with a man who needs no introduction, the great Tom Brady. And he's had a great season so far throwing the football. Very likely could go over 4,000 yards with a good performance here. And even in an age of passing first, that is no small accomplishment. A first carry for Leonard Fournette. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense because someone's going to run for some big yardage. The rushing numbers for Fournette from last week. 15 carries, 71 yards. Here's a give to Fournette. They've got a nice scheme going right now, and they run the football pretty well. In fact, I was talking with him on the field before the game, and he said he's starting to hear from the guys ahead of him on the rushing yardage total, and they want to know if he's going to jump up there and join them at the top of the list. Now they'll throw with Brady. Rolling to his right. 
And he's got it. Caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Scotty Miller with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Buccaneers are on the board first on the road here in L.A. Well, you've got to like that start on both sides of the football. You force the three and out, and then you score on your first drive. Well, I know someone who doesn't like that start. Well, yeah, the other side. <laughs> yeah, they don't like that at all, right? <laughs> this is not the way it's supposed to be. But what you just described, that's team football. All right, when you get a three and out, you're supposed to take advantage of it on the offensive side of the ball. You said, thank you very much for getting us the rock. Let's put it in the end zone, and they did exactly that. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. And, Charles, you look at these two teams, and these are those kind of litmus test games in the second half of the season that if you're a coach or a player, you can either really look forward to them or really dread them, depending on your point of view. And if you're dreading them, you're not going to go very far in the playoffs. You need to look forward to these kind of games because here we've got two division leaders, both real contenders for the NFC title. And you're right, you love having easy games on your schedule, but you need some games like this to toughen you up a bit and ensure that you're ready for the shock of playoff football. Stafford on third down. Oh, a hit, he lost the football. Stafford puts it on the ground, and the Buccaneers have it. The defense, they were swarming that time and ultimately got to him before he could get rid of the football and knocked it free. And don't you feel just a little bit of sympathy for him back there, though? So much going on, so much swirling around. He's trying to find someone downfield. He's trying to move around to find an open target. Sometimes you forget the number one thing, take care of the football. With the Bucks offense making their way back out on the field, let's take a look at the playoff picture, Charles, coming into the weekend in the NFC. And for them, it's no longer a question of will they make the playoffs. They've clinched the division title. The question, can they hold on to that number one seed? And this is where the mental fortitude comes to play, doesn't it? Because now you're not just the coach talking about it, it's team talking about it to each other, supporting each other, carrying each other along, because having that number one seed means everything in the NFL. It does. So even though the division title's clinched, and he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Leonard Fournette hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season. And the Buccaneers are off to a 13-0 first quarter lead. The full team is involved in this game early, aren't they? Go down the field, score on offense, take the ball away on defense, and go right back and score again. You got to like the way that's working for them. That's exactly right. Touchdown, turnover, touchdown, two score lead. A little bit like you at breakfast this morning. I got to get this in. Yeah, perfect omelet. Dropped it. So a little bit of a turnover. You went right back, though, and got that omelet and crushed it. Got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Got to do what you got to do. A little worried about your hands, though. Yeah. Well. <laughs> and following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. And the Rams getting set to go now. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions, but some are worse than others. So you can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense. But when you turn it over, it changes momentum. And when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. Here's a run with Akers on second down. And the Buccaneer defense for the second straight play, flexing its muscle by forcing a loss. The Bucs with an extra defender now in the secondary here on third down. Now Stafford. Looking underneath, he's got Akers. And he's going to be stopped here a few yards short of the first as the tackle is made at the 33. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Here's Beckham. A very good punt, but a 16-yard return. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. And Brady and the Buccaneers here first and 10 at the 31-yard line. 
And he'll begin with a give to Fournette to start the drive. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. Fournette, a first down carry. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Brady going to throw. Escaping the pressure right. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. And I put my first tally mark next to the Brady to Gronk counter here. I think it may be the first of many because once they get going, look out. Things tend to snowball. Tom Brady trusts Gronk as much as any receiver I think he's thrown to in his career. And it's evident and when you see that. And that's saying something. That's saying something right there. But he's earned it. 14-0 the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Brady will try again on second down. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Brady to throw again. Flushed out right. He's got it complete to Gronkowski. And he fumbled it. It's on the ground. And the Rams have got it back. There are two words that we hear coaches say all of the time. One starts with a B, one starts with an S, ball security. And they preach it. They, they have it up in, in the meeting rooms, right? You see the signs. They talk about it all the time. But still, when you've got defenders out there who are preaching, hey, we're going to take the ball away from you, no matter what position you play, you've got to take care of the rock. On first down, they'll start out with Akers. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. They get him that time thanks to the safety blitz as he sank for a loss of four. I spent a lot of extra time preparing for this game watching this offensive line because they gave up five sacks last week in their loss. They just gave up another one now. They don't seem to be working together as a cohesive unit. Right? Four guys might have it right, but the fifth guy is giving something up. They've got to find a way to all get on the same page. On second down now, Akers. And he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. Call it a gain of five that time. They'll be left with a third down at about nine to go. Here's Stafford. That's complete to his tight end, Higby. And a nice job there defensively. They get him to the ground short of the first, right around the 42. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for L.A. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. A seven-yard return following a punt of 45 yards. And that will come the offense as they take over. Leonard Fournette making his way back out there. And it may just be the second quarter, but he's in his own well on his way to eclipsing that 100-yard mark. And when a back has a game, as we're witnessing right now, his name's going to be in the books. But it's really a collective deal, isn't it? Because that means he's getting plenty of blocking, a lot of help from his teammates, but he's making the most of it. Yeah, he's made the most of it to this point. To throw again on second down. Brady eluding the pressure right. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. Well, so far in this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play cover? Oh, batted at the line and intercepted. Picked up by the linebacker, Jalen Smith. And he will bring it back. It's an interception return for a Rams touchdown. 
Short throw pick six right there, those linebackers. They love when those short throws come and those eyes get real wide, don't they? How about the anticipation on the play? Reading, reacting, and then the ability to catch the football and take it in the opposite direction. Chase McLaughlin on for the extra point. And that one makes it 14 to 7. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And they will wrangle it down a couple yards shy of the 30. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And really, it's we're talking a little more about the stakes of this game. Currently, these are the top two seeds in the NFC. I think they're the two best teams. Would you agree? I think you can definitely make the case that they are, and I like where you're going with that. I do know that we've seen a couple of other teams along the way that would say, hey, don't forget about us. But your premise, I think, could be spot on. These could easily be the top two teams in the NFC. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. From their own 40 to the other 40. The gain of 20 leads to first and 10. Now Brady. Flush to his right. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Touchdown! Scotty Miller with his second touchdown of the game, number eight on the season. And the Bucs are going to add on to their lead. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? <laughs> you know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> <laughs> and you're, you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the book. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. Extra point up and good by Suckup. And it's now 21 to 7. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt a return. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Play action. And they drop him for a loss, but penalty markers are on the field. Let's see about the call. Oh, man. So a potential big play by this defense wiped out by the face mask. And disappointing because it was so unnecessary. They had the sack. But the officials are definitely keeping a close eye on the quarterback, especially the referee. They were able to spot that one immediately. And a good physical run that time. He's going to wind up gaining five on that one. On second down, it's Ward. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. Stafford now to throw. And able to find Higby, it's complete. And he is going to have a Rams first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. A reminder coming up just a few minutes from now, we'll send you to Jonathan Coachman and our crew in Orlando. Coach will have a look back at some of the stats and scores from yesterday's action.
A little bit of daylight on that first down run. Sets him up nicely. Eight yards on the carry. Only needing two yards on second down. Back to throw. Stafford. And that one off the mark behind him. Incomplete. After the incompletion here now, third and two. Now it's Stafford. They get this into the hands of Van Jefferson. And he is going to have a Rams first down as they're able to convert on third and short yardage with a gain of four. On first and ten, Stafford. They'll get this one to cop complete. And he takes it down to the ten-yard line. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they're having panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They were starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. Again, it's Stafford. That's complete to Ward. And they'll lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. To throw again on second down. Stafford. Throw left side caught here by Ward. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Two yards on the pickup there. And that's going to lead to a third and 11. incomplete tight defense there on third down but what a product of good coaching and even better execution because he realized he's in field goal range no sense forcing anything and he made sure he didn't and his kick is good and that will get the disadvantage now back down to 11. so the three points here they're still down but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break Anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know that they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half. And he is out of bounds as they'll start up past the 30. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And with a two-score lead already, they may just look to get this thing to the locker room. Escaping the pressure right. And break. The tight end's got it. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. Here's Brady to throw. Flushed out right. Sideline throw. It's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. And you see the clock almost empty, so this is likely the last play in the second quarter. The final shot before half for Brady. And now a fumble. Brady loses the football. So we're at halftime here on a Monday night as we send you to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? All right, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and Charles in a minute. But first, time to give the folks at home a look at what's going on around the NFL. We'll start up at MetLife Stadium in New Jersey, where it was the Jets who were able to come away with the win at home. Zach Wilson, sharp in the victory, as his guys get back within a game of 500. From there, let's get down to Baltimore to check in on the Ravens at home at MNT Bank Stadium. And it was the visiting Dolphins who were able to get the victory. Tua Tungavailoa leading the way in the victory with three touchdown passes. Finally, let's get up to the place they call Title Town, Green Bay, Wisconsin, to see what's happening with the Packers. And they were losers in that one to the visiting Minnesota Vikings. Dalvin Cook, well over 100 yards on the ground with three touchdown runs. In the game you're watching, it's who else? Tom Brady with a strong first half. His guys have the lead as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Bucks with the lead, and they'll get the football first as the second half is underway. Taking it about the one. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. Out 
come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start the third quarter. And Charles, they got the lead. I would imagine the overall halftime tone was a positive one, but what do you think the talking points were in the locker room? Well, if there were three talking points at the half, partner, all of them were about turnovers because they were pretty loose with the ball. Otherwise, this lead could be even bigger. Now, I don't think that they overly harped on it, but I think they told them, guys, if you want to keep calling those plays that are exciting, you've got to take care of the ball. Otherwise, we may have to dial things back a little bit. Now Leonard Fournette. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. They keep it with Fournette on first down. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 83 yards rushing for him so far as his terrific season continues here. Brady now on first down. Flush to his right. It's caught by Mike Evans. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. A big play that time through the air. 34 yards. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Now Brady gets away with one. Lucky could have been intercepted, but it falls to the ground. Here's second and 10. Now Brady. To Evans on the slam. And in for the Buccaneers touchdown. Mike Evans. Touchdown number 15 of the year. And the Buccaneers take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical, as one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. Extra point put through by Suckum. And the lead is up to 18 now. And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. Out come the Rams. They'll have it first here to begin the third quarter. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder. It puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. On second down now, it's Ward. And he will lose yard here to the 31-yard line. Two yards the loss, and now they go from second and two to a tough third and four. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. To throw is Stafford. And down he goes, a Buccaneer sack. Joe Tryon able to record his fifth sack of the season. I think we've seen this before. Someone's down three scores. That situation there. It's just going to add to their growing frustrations, don't you think? Yeah, a bad number three right now. Three-score game, third quarter, three and out, not what they wanted. And you can tell on the sideline, those faces are getting a little bit longer as this one goes. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Nifty running by Becca. 44-yard punt, return of nine. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 37. They begin with a run by Fournette. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, in every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now. 
hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. To throw, it's Brady. He finds his target, it's Evans. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down by about three yards or so as they wind up getting seven there on third and four. Out of the pistol, it's Fournette. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Back to the ground, this time with Jones. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. To throw is Brady. He completes it to Evans. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Final minute now of the third quarter. Fournette once more on second down. Four yards on the pick up there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. Working from the gun, it's Brady. A pass underneath for Fournette. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. And I'll tell you what, this offense is playing a little bit of keep away right now. They've come out here in the third quarter. Possess the ball for quite a while, and they keep on converting. Nice pitch and catch there to set up the first and goal. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Second down and goal. Brady. And he pulls it in for the Buccaneer touchdown. The fourth touchdown pass of the game for Tom Brady. And the Buccaneers are closing in on a third straight win as they widen the gap further here in the fourth quarter. You have fun with this one, partner? I am. I mean, he's been fun to watch under center. We always talk about, you know, getting to the next level, right? When we see people get into the zone. This guy's in the master class right now. What a performance he's putting on, just carving him up. Four touchdown passes, carving him up is right. Seems like everything he throws is going to be a completion and going in the end zone. Extra point up and good by Sucka. And they open the lead up now to 25. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going. And shedding the tackle, and now some room. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there is going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. A run there on first down and a pretty good one of five yards, so make it second and five. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Stafford. And he's got the hook up here. It's Woods. Hard to believe his first catch of the game defensively. They bottled him up. That's why they're well on their way to victory. Put your best cover guy on him and then change the coverages behind him throughout the game. Brackets, double, zone, man, you name it. Make sure he gets a lot of angles. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Here's Stafford. Now that'll be caught by Cup. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. To the air again, Stafford. And he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. 
Dante Fowler, his second sack of the night. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, and with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Desperation time for Stafford on fourth down. Going up top for Cup, and that is caught one-handed. Oh, my, he pulled it in. A big connection on that one, 39 yards. Stafford. And it's complete. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Van Jefferson, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Rams are able to cut into this lead. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And that'll cut the lead down to 18. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. And the Buccaneers able to recover. Their hands team does its job. Now they're down big here in the fourth. They had to try the onside kick. Can't fault them for the effort at least. No, you can't at all. And if nothing else, now you've put something that you're trying to practice, right, that you, you've worked on into a game situation. And now you can go back and dissect it. So if you need it again sometime, maybe you'll find a better way to do it. But, yeah, this game's pretty much done for them. A lane to run there is Fournette able to get about seven on first down. Second down and three. They'll run it again with Fournette. And he gets it down to the 32. Well, I don't think there's any question, Brandon, at this stage. The stop troops, the defensive guys, they've got to use their three timeouts here. They've got to stop them and get the ball back. Yeah, if you're in that two to three score deficit window that they're in now, you got to get it ASAP. Yeah, no doubt about it. Stop them, use your timeouts. Easier to move the ball on offense without timeouts than to stop them on defense without using them. 118 yards on the ground for him now as he has gotten better, really, as the night's going on. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Now Brady. Escaping the pressure right. And Evans hauls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. Five touchdown passes now for Tom Brady. And the Bucks are on their way to a 13th win on the year as they add on to their lead. You wonder now if he might be able to remove the helmet, put on the baseball cap, and watch the rest of this one from the sideline. His fifth touchdown pass of the game. Say that again. Did you say fifth touchdown pass of the game? Yes, sir. But that's a heck of a performance, isn't it? Because they've had no answer for him at all, all game long. Receivers have been open constantly, and he hasn't missed a single one of them. Extra point put through by Suckup, and they open the lead up now to 25. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. No run back here, down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. It was Jamel Dean who brought him down. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Rams football here as we get your reset. They're looking at second down now as they search for a consolation score. 
Now this throw caught left side. They'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Well, this game is certainly pretty well over. They go ahead and mark it in the win column, but as a defense, they don't want to get so soft now that everybody just throws the ball all over the place against them. Gets big. Oh, well, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Marcus May with a pick. pick. And it's a pick six. He brings it back to the house from Bucket Air TD. Well, dare I say it, it's kind of quid pro quo. Both defenses now with an interception return for a touchdown. Your vocabulary, sir. Well done. Extra point try now for Sucko. Now this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. L.A. set to take over again on offense. Let's just be frank. They're playing for pride at this point. <laughs> that's, that's all that's left because victory... Not a chance now. And I can't wait to see how they actually go about doing it because there are a lot of people watching the body language of the guys on the field now. And if they call plays they want executed, they need to do that and do it really well. Otherwise, there could be repercussions. We'll see how they handle the waning moments of this one. Second and six, just inside the 30. Now Stafford. Right side complete, that's Woods. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Now a first down throw, Stafford. Complete, Jefferson the target. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. On first down, Stafford here. He'll get this to Ward. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. And quickly they get to the line. From the red zone now, Stafford. Going to Woods, but that pass is intercepted. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. And the Buccaneers are going to take over once again at their own 25-yard line. CD, this defense, man. <laughs> At this rate, they're just having fun out there right now. And normally with this type of a lead, if you're a starter on defense, you're saying, hey, let the other guys play. But with this going on, no one wants to come out of the game. They all want their shot at picking off a pass. A handoff to Fournette. And he's going to be dropped following a pick up a seven past the 30 to the 32. I know that every now and then we get in those meetings with coaches and you almost want to roll your eyes when they talk about staying on schedule when they're moving the football. But would you say a seven-yard run is ahead of schedule? Fourth quarter with the lead, you love that, don't you? No doubt about it because staying on schedule is trying to get four downs on first down. They did that plus three. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So for Tampa Bay, they continue to rack up the victories as this one moves them to 13-2 and two on the year. And they'll get another road test next week as they head to Atlanta to take on the Falcons. Meanwhile, for L.A., it's a bad time of year to take a loss like this as they drop to 10-5. And, and they'll try to get back.